Starting things off with Franny Marin. Franny is one of those players that the Survivor community completely fell in love with during her season. At the start of Survivor Season 44, I would have never guessed that I would be calling Franny a Goliath in this video. But that was the beauty of watching Franny play Survivor. She defied expectations, became a complete challenge beast, and I think if she was given the opportunity to play Survivor again, would understand how to manage her threat level better. And I would love to see how Franny would interact with another player we'll be talking Talking about later in the video. A little bit of housekeeping before we get started, this dream cast won't just be random players thrown into the mix, this will be the crazy what if scenario if the theme of Survivor David vs Goliath, which let me remind you is one of the greatest seasons of all time, is combined with only being able to use players in the new era of Survivor. That means this cast can only have players from Survivor 41, Survivor 42, Survivor 43, and Survivor 44. But there is a few more rules applied such as no winners, all from the new era, 20 person cast, one tribe filled with survivor Goliaths, one tribe filled with survivor Davids, and a bonus rule, the David versus Goliath tribe placement will be based on how they performed in their previous season, and not based on occupations and archetypes like we saw for the original survivor David versus Goliath season. And because this entire video concept is based on another survivor YouTuber's favorite video series, we are joined by the survivor bandit to break it all down. I'll be covering all the players on the Goliath tribe and the survivor bandit will be covering all the players on the David's tribe. If there ever is a person to call it David despite making it to the end, it is Xander. I think we can all agree on that. Xander spent the majority of 41's pre-merge without a vote and was forced to lose his closest ally. At the merge he had to face Liana's power followed by a clutch immunity win and all while the beware idol placed a target on his back. Xander had a bad of roadblocks to compete with in 41 and as a result is considered by many to be a fan favourite. Following on from that we have Dwight who despite being in his early 20s somehow suffered survivor life in the form of a nightmare. This man got married and was living the good life only to be divorced, have his belongings taken from him and he didn't even make the jury. Despite interviewing people with power in the real world, Dwight fell victim to the power players in the game of Survivor but at least that makes him a perfect David. While it's hard to rationalise the majority of new school survivor runners up as a David, Owen Knight is yet another exception. I love Owen, he seems like a genuinely great bloke. But a Survivor 43 voting record does have the accuracy of a Star Wars Stormtrooper. While things didn't go Owen's way, you could tell he was extremely passionate about the game and with a bit more agency he could end up being a strong power player. Hopefully on the return this Charlie Brown could transform into Charlie 27. Every good returnee cast deserves a wildcard pick in one of the slots, and so I added Josh for the most recent season of Survivor, Survivor 44. Now yes, Josh was the merge boot and didn't even make the jury, but at every instance of the game he was just barely scraping by. On his initial tribe, his personal trainer Lai weighed him down and he was forced to idle himself on the new swap tribe with surgical precision. Because he was forced to fight both Tooth and Neil to survive every tribal, I feel this David title fits him well. Yes, he doesn't look like a stereotypical David, but like like it or not, Brandon's foundations came from him being at the bottom. This David found his slingshot in the premiere and used his one valid vote to slay a mighty foe. Not to mention his boot was also caused by a Judas with an idol that worked with one of his targets, all for the purpose of eliminating him from the game. Now on to the Goliath females, we've already placed Franny Marin on this tribe and now Shan from Survivor 41 will be joining her. Shan adds the wild factor to this season that would build the hype and anticipation within the community. During the very first new era season of Survivor, she was so polarizing with her humming the Shan song. Fans were either obsessed with her or loved to hate her. Whatever the case may be, she dominated the season all the way up until the final eight where she was eventually betrayed by someone that we'll be talking about later in the video. Next up, we have Drea Wheeler, obviously representing Survivor 42. Similar to what we just talked about with Shan, Drea is a player that the community could not stop talking about all season long. 100% she would be considered a Goliath due to her physical strength, but also due to the way she played Survivor her first time around, with finding multiple idols and advantages and not being scared to get caught red-handed. So I instantly go to the water room, start throwing water over my hand. 
and start panicking, thinking like, I have to get it off. I have to get this red stuff off. Now it does need to be pointed out that I don't think Drea has much interest in playing Survivor again. And I also don't think she would ever be asked to play Survivor again. But simply looking at the game she played, it's Goliath material. However, we are quickly moving into Survivor 43 for the next female Goliath with Noelle Lambert. Straight up, when I was building this cast of players, Noelle was the very first person I chose to include. When looking at first glance, you can make the argument of Noelle being a David for losing a leg and being an amputee. But after watching her play Survivor, I view her as a Goliath in the sense that she has the Goliath strength during the challenges. There's Noelle! Noelle! In one of the Whoa. biggest comebacks! And the go, history Noelle. of Survivor! Rounding out the group of Goliath females, we need to include the zero vote finalists of Survivor 44 with Carolyn Weger. Again, from an archetype standpoint, it would make more sense to include Carolyn on the tribe of underdogs with the Davids, but the magical thing about Survivor is you never know who is going to be playing a strong game, and Carolyn dominated the game even though her competitors still underestimated her the entire time. Going into an all-star season, I highly doubt Carolyn would be underestimated again. While Tiffany on one hand is known by many to be the queen of rolling her eyes, her position in the game was anything but royalty. She was almost a first boot, had a Sarie-esque moment on the infamous balance beam, and ran out of road when the merge hit. Honestly, Tiffany didn't do much wrong on 41, and was more so the immediate victim of the Yase tribe being an easy target. Considering she created a pretty strong all-female alliance and managed to survive the first two pre-merge tribals, I think Tiffany on the return could become a true Goliath Slayer. Although a lot of Tiffany's underdog status was more so circumstance rather than individual, the same can't be said for Chanel. She lost her vote when it was crucial to keep it, and turned her closest ally in Daniel into her worst enemy. That being said, I think we can all agree watching Chanel overplay her hand on multiple occasions made for entertaining TV. That being said, Chanel, on the return, maybe don't get into ship wheel related beef with a one-armed attorney. Just a suggestion. Now on to Tori, who may not seem like a stereotypical David pick until we delve a bit deeper. In her initial season, Tori was always a tribe's secondary boot pre-merge, and only survived post-merge due to her immunity wins. Whether reminding others of their job on the puzzle, or calling out the hourglass, Tori was a fun contestant that wasn't afraid to become sassy. Plus, she also had a notable rivalry with the Goliath-sized Jonathan, so if anything, that should further boon her David status. Lindsay is the final David representation from 42 that I picked, and if there's ever a contestant to demonstrate the grit of a David, it's a Taku Jersey girl herself. Lindsay provides a very strong challenge asset for the Davids, and went head-to-head -head against some of the strongest competitors in Modern Survivor. Add on to this her never-say-die attitude, competitive background, as well as a willingness to call people out, and this jury threat could turn into a threat for Goliath kind. Skipping on to season 43, we finally have Janine, the woman where possibly everything went wrong for them. They were unknowingly on the bottom on their initial tribe, got blindsided at the Ellie boot, thought they lost their idol when Dwight left, and this was all to be used as protection for Jessie. Considering the roller coaster of a season she was forced to endure on her first appearance, I feel Janine would make for a perfect second chance candidate on a tribe with fellow underdogs. Starting things off for the Goliath males, we have Ricard Foyer from Survivor 41. Just like I teased a little bit earlier in the the video with casting Shan on this season, I think it would be a crime if we didn't bring Ricard and Shan back for a future all-star season. In low key, it works perfectly with this theme as they truly were edited together as the Goliaths on Survivor 41. It would be so interesting to see how that pre-existing relationship would interact with playing Survivor together and then going back and forth on social media. But the next player is the most Goliath type of Goliath on the season with Jonathan Young representing Survivor 42. Big dude makes him a Goliath. Makes it far in his first season makes him a Goliath. Honestly, I don't need to explain myself at all for this one. So, moving on to Jonathan's ally from Survivor 42, we have Omar Zahir. Now, you need to remember, we are only casting players from the new era of Survivor for this season. So, there's gonna be so many pre-existing relationships taking place. This is another super interesting case that shows the magic of Survivor. As at first glance, you would think to place Omar on the tribe of Davids, but nah, you need to remember the strategic beast that Omar was all season long. Even going as 
far as to control the way a tribal council would go without having any power in voting. Similar to Omar, Jesse Lopez should be looked at as a Goliath in terms of strategic gameplay with what we saw during Survivor 43. Is he a physical Goliath? Of course not. He lost six individual challenges in a row during the post-merge of the season. The crazy thing with Jesse is that the other players knew he was a Goliath in the game with being a big threat, but they just couldn't get rid of him as he kept making big moves, as it was ultimately the fire-making challenge that took him out. Last but not least, we have Danny Massa from Survivor 44. Danny isn't the strategic beast like Jesse or Omar, and he isn't as physically strong as Jonathan, but what I think Danny portrays perfectly is the heart of what it means to be a Goliath. Anyway, do you agree with this dream cast? Let me know in the comments down below with any changes you would make. And click right here for my Survivor pre-merge versus post-merge dream cast.